This video is sponsored by Squarespace. <laughs> Hello Internet, Taliesin here, and I'd like to invite you for a moment to close your eyes, relax, and imagine. I would like you to imagine a game universally praised by critics and fans alike, a game famed for its welcoming community, passionate and charismatic game director, and devoted fan base. A game based in a universe and franchise, which it is no exaggeration to say, is A plus 9 carat S tier iconic in video game history. A game which is so dedicated to providing the highest possible player experience that when its first version fell below expectations, they blew the entire tie thing up and start it again from the ground up, becoming a bright and shining symbol of what developers can achieve when they listen to players, value their community, and always aim to be the best they can possibly be. Are you imagining all that? It's nice, isn't it? Because now I'd like you to imagine that in the middle of all of that excellence lies the single worst experience in MMORPG history. A shining diamond of shit in the crown of an otherwise pristine experience. A rancid fart in the space suit of awesomeness. An instance so bad that it's the video game equivalent of getting to the end of a date and being asked if you want to come inside for a coffee. And when you get inside, it turns out you misheard and the date actually said, do you want to come in for a lobotomy? Or even worse than that, do you want to come in and run the Praetorium with me? Because today, internet, we are talking about the curious case of the Praetorium in Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. The confusingly awful anomaly wedged into one of the world's best MMOs and ask, why is it here? Why exactly is it so bad? Why can't we do without it? How could we fix it? Ah, and also, Taliesin, who are you and what makes you qualified to talk about this at all? Get out of here with your really nice jacket and your traditionally WoW-focused YouTube channel and your really splendid jacket. And you know what? That is a pretty good point, honestly. After all, what right do I have to come along and give any opinion about Final Fantasy XIV, especially if I'm going to be such a dick about it? Perfectly fair. So allow me, if you will, to give you a rundown of my credentials in this matter. Oh, by the way, you can open your eyes now. Hi, my name is Taliesin. I've had a subscription to Final Fantasy XIV on and off for just over five years. Actually, since before I started making videos on this YouTube channel. First time around, I got to the then max level of 60 and played through Heavenswood, including some of the end game at the time. But I'm currently on my third user account for the game because every time I stop playing for a little bit, I forget my username and password. And that means I have to brave the mod Mog station again. And if you don't know what the Mog station is, imagine the original Space Jam website, but every time you click on any of the links, it just makes a fart noise and laughs in your face and then dies. Here is a genuine email that I received from Square Enix when I told them I couldn't remember my username or password, telling me all I had to do was log into my account using my username and password and my account would be recovered, which in fairness is true, just not entirely helpful. So yeah, five plus years, three accounts. Oh, uh, this is a weird one, but I'm also like, lifelong childhood friends with Bethan Walker, who plays Alizé. As in, we were part of the same small friendship circle in high school and sixth form. We went to youth theatre. She's one of my absolute all-time besties. And okay, so I'm a pretty terrible friend. I once ducked out of someone's wedding to go to a tune yards gig, but even I have no excuse not to play the MMO that one of my oldest friends does a voice for when I'm literally her friend who makes his living playing MMOs. So hopefully you can understand at this point that any jokes that I make about Praetorium or Final Fantasy in general comes from the same place that my WoW stuff does. A place of genuine love, where I adore this game, so I just like talking about it. And unfortunately, this is just how I talk about stuff. I can't help it. Okay, that's enough qualifications to talk about a dungeon in a video game. So join us as we talk about the Praetorium in Final Fantasy XIV, a video that I recommend you watch while you're running the Praetorium in Final Fantasy XIV. Okay, go, 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 go. Such devastation. This was not one of the main reasons that I am so fascinated by the Praetorium is that, I mean, yes, it's terrible, but because that is such a contrast to a leveling game that Final Fantasy XIV otherwise gets so right. And you don't have to take my word for it. XIV's is a new player experience that, let's be honest, more and more new players are embarking on at this very moment. In fact, I'm only recording this video right now because I'm sat in a three hour queue waiting to get onto one of the Ether data centers. There are a lot of sprouts in Eorzea right now. And in fact, 
fact, there are two distinctly different Praetorium experiences. A, that of the new player running it fresh and as part of their story campaign, and two, that of the grizzled veteran grinding their daily roulettes for poetics. Two completely different ways of hating Praetorium, and you better believe that we will be getting our Rage Boner on for both in this vid. But let's start with the Sprouts, who get their trauma at the climax of the main story quests of A Realm Reborn. And here is my first controversial opinion of the video, are you ready? Because straight off the bat, let me say here, I think Realm Reborn content is really good. I think Realm Reborn has a massively undeserved bad rep. In fact, this is the exact conversation that every established Final Fantasy XIV fan has with any non-player. Evie, did you know that the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV has a free trial and includes the entirety of a Realm Reborn and the award-winning Heavensward expansion up to level 60 with no restrictions on playtime? Oh wow, that sounds brilliant. I think I'll give it a go. Awesome! Oh, you're gonna have so much fun. Except the first 50 levels, obviously, which are really sucky and you won't have much fun at all because it's very bad indeed. Oh, okay. But from then on in, it's great! Okay, great! Apart from Stormblood, which is just okay, but then it's awesome again! Uh, okay. You can be a cat boy. Okay! Let me start an account. Wait, what the hell is this oh. website? Okay, see you in game, bye! And it's easy to see why long-time players, fresh from the awesomeness of Shadowbringers, might be a little embarrassed of that base game. Because all of the component parts of what makes Final Fantasy XIV so great for them are there, present and correct, but everything is basically the worst example of everything they love about XIV. Especially, and I hate to say this, the voice acting. Minfilia sounds like she's recording her lines from the weekly call they allow her on the payphone in the prison where she's serving a lifetime sentence for not being very good at voice acting. I would have you play the leading role in this investigation. Like, imagine there's someone that you're really in love with and they finally agree to go on a date with you and you're like, awesome, can't wait, you won't regret this. But first, you have to date me from 10 years ago for 50 to 100 hours before you can go on a date with present me. Hey, I hope you like snoods and alt folk and very strong opinions about atheism. But overall, they are wrong to be embarrassed because Realm Reborn is great. It's got an interesting cast of characters and locations, plot twists. The story is actually really well structured in my opinion and does an effective job of leading you through action set pieces and instances which build in drama and stakes. And yeah, there has been a considerable prune to the base Realm Reborn path to make it more manageable. And yes, you can buy a story skip if you want, but that's kind of like buying a story skip for Baldur's Gate. In 14, the story is such a major part of the reason that people love the game and such an unusually dominant part of the gameplay itself compared to other big MMOs. So whereas, yes, 14 does force new players to play through the worst that the game has to offer first, and a lot of it, the payoff is that when players do make it through the hundreds and hundreds of hours that it takes to reach max level, they are invested in the characters and the world and the game in a genuinely emotional way that I'm not sure any other MMO can really match. Realm Reborn is good. And even though so much of it has been pruned, some of it is creaky and old-fashioned. And speaking of creaky and old-fashioned bits which haven't been pruned, it's Praetorium time. So, picture the scene. You are a new player. You've been convinced to try 14 because all of your friends keep telling you about how they cried all the way through Shadowbringers and you love crying and you've seen that everyone's going to the moon in Endwalker and you love the moon. So you have been stomping through a realm reborn. You've become best buddies with the forest friends and the ship people and the monitorous scum and hung out on the beach for a bit longer than you should have done and you fought a bunch of progressively meaner primals collecting your infinity stones along the way. And this is the kind of story that my video game brain is trained to understand stand, you know, this shit is easy. Then you start getting in trouble with the Garlean Empire, who have got an Ultima weapon to help them on their unstoppable quest to dress everyone in armor that looks like worn out sex toys. But that's okay though, because your best mates with Sid now, who is 34 years old. And he helps you to capture a mech suit and take out some bases and- Oh no, Thancred is a baddie now! Oh shit, sorry, spoilers for Realm Reborn. I should, I should have done this, I'm sorry. And basically, I've seen a story before, you know. I've done stories, and I know when a story is coming to a big dramatic climax. And when everyone is saying, yeah, here it comes, boys, the big climax, the final showdown, here we go to the Praetorium, then I'm all like, oh yeah, boy, load me up, because this is legit, very exciting, and it's all about to kick off. And so you better believe I queue for the Praetorium, and the queue pops really quick, because 14 has like a gamillion T new players right now, all doing the exact same thing. And we start with a very long 
cutscene. But unlike most cutscenes, this one is unskippable, which I have got to tell you, doing this for the first time is a massive relief because, yeah, I want to be able to enjoy this final battle without any of the usual anxiety that my group's going to clear it all without me. And wow, is that my whole party in the cutscene? They look awesome. We are awesome. I am having the best time. This is a great day. And then the instant starts and holy shit, this is amazing. The tank is absolutely bopping it. Okay, let me just blast off some spells really quick to DPS because I am determined to pull my weight here. Let me just, uh, wait, where did the tank go? What's the, uh, no, why is no one else? Where did everyone go? But wait, now I've got all the, oh shit, no, wait, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, no. Guaranteed 100% the first time you run this epic story capping instance, you have no idea that the done thing is just to run straight to the first teleporter through the mobs and GTFO to the next floor. This happened to me, it definitely happened to you, and in fact, while I was writing this very video, Evertel got to Praetorium for the first time. Oh, no. And this is the actual real life WhatsApp message that she sent me from downstairs when she did. Because you don't know this dungeon takes 45 minutes to complete, and as a result, the veterans your group is stuffed with have every moment of actual gameplay honed down into its most efficient executions so they can joylessly harvest poetics and be done with this shit. You don't know that, and now you dead though. And even better, the death release button in dungeons works differently to how it does in the open world, where it's a simple one click and release. In dungeons though, you have to hold the button down to release. But how would you know that if you've never died in a dungeon before? This is genuine footage of me gently clicking release like I'm used to and nothing happening and me thinking, oh, obviously I'm not allowed to release right now because my group is fighting a boss or something. I'll just wait till it lets me. Oh, too late. They've started a cutscene without me. Well, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm sure I didn't miss much. Oh no, I still can't release. This is very weird. I guess it's because they're fighting that cool looking baddie that arrived in the cutscene. Obviously, I just can't release while they're in combat. No biggie, I'll just wait a bit longer. Oh shit, you have to hold the button down. Okay. Oh, I get a shortcut though. That's great. Thank goodness. Good system. Okay. Well, that was a bit rubbish, but we're all together again now. Let's take the fight to the vibrator dudes. Oh wait. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh, the lift is going down without me and I can't just jump down and follow because this is Final Fantasy 14. And being able to just walk off the edge of something is apparently incredibly immersion breaking, so I can't do it. But okay, okay, okay. That's fine. I'll just wait for the elevator to come back up and I'll join my buddies. Like, how far could they have really got. Don't worry, guys. I'm coming. Guys, guys, where did you... Aha! There you are. Don't worry, guys. I'm here. Uh, just one thing. How do I get there where you are? No problem. I've got this. It must be pretty obvious. I'll just, um... Uh, yeah, you know what? F this for a game of soldiers. I'll just re in 30 minutes when my deserter rebuff clears. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Taliesin, you're either the most stupid man alive or you're just acting that way for the video. But I swear, on my life, this is the genuine video footage of my first run in Praetorium on this third account. This is how it happened. For reals. I genuinely didn't expect everyone to just teleport away from the first room. I genuinely didn't know about the death release button working differently in instances than in the open world. And the lift thing? Okay, that was just me being stupid, but it is what genuinely happened. And from talking to my friends and community, I am far from alone in having this type of experience first time through. This isn't even everything that can go wrong. God forbid you forget to pick up the mech key, otherwise you'll be making another run back on yourself while everyone else stomps around having explodey fun times. And yes, there is automatic catch up after each section, but if you're new, you don't know how much you're missing in between that. And since this is the climax of the whole base game story, it's understandable why you'd be a little bit pissed off by that. Basically, for those people for whom Praetorium is actually serving as a story delivery device, i.e. new players reaching the grand resolution of the story they've been playing throughout the last 60 to 100 hours, the chances of them actually having the experience that the devs intended are just too low. The odds of some bullshit meaning they missed bits or just as bad feel as though they've missed bits too high. And here's the thing, this new player experience is a thousand times better than it used to be. One of the reasons I remembered so little about Praetorium in this, my third playthrough of the game, is because back in the day, I barely experienced it at all. Back then, all the cutscenes were skippable, like they still are in most dungeons. And as we'll see in a moment, these are some long ass cutscenes. So my group, quite understandably, skipped that shit, and my whole run was spent jogging through empty corridors, wondering where everyone was and what I was supposed to do. And now, finally, having played through Praetorium properly and in full on my second attempt on my third account, I can say, yeah, it's pretty good. It's big and grand and exciting and stupid, like very 
very, very stupid, like outrageously stupid, but in a good way, and painfully long-winded and completely nonsensical, and ultimately everything that you could possibly hope for from the end of the main story quests of A Realm Reborn. It is absolutely right and proper that players should need to play it and see it before advancing. And yes, the only way to really make that happen is to funnel veteran players into the instance to make sure there's always groups. So I totally understand Square's thinking and motivation here. But here's the other thing. If the experience as it exists now sucks for new players, it really sucks for those veterans. The rewards for completing this instance on the Daily Roulette are chunky. Enough XP to advance you a couple of levels if you're lucky, and a fistful of poetics, so you can better indulge in the true end game of 14, the glamours. That's all well and good, and as it should be, and the fact that there always are plenty of max level players in that queue shows that it absolutely works. But that doesn't mean that the experience itself isn't more miserable than Mel Gibson at a bar mitzvah, and I'm sure I don't have to tell you, internet, that the root of that misery stems from those unskippable cutscenes, which need to be unskippable to justify Praetorium even still existing at all for the new players. And look, if you've completed all the main story in Final Fantasy XIV, then you have already watched, and this isn't a joke, at least 84 hours of cutscenes to get there. And most of that was your character nodding. What I'm saying is you wouldn't be playing this game if you had a major problem with cutscenes. But even then, Praetorium is on a completely different level, not just because of the length of the cutscenes, but because of the actual ratio of gameplay compared to them. To show you what I mean, let's take a little trip through the instance with our stopwatch. After the 56 second intro cutscene, which is longer than usual, but it's okay because it takes that long to properly admire your full team's glamours, it's the teleport run. And this, running through trash without accidentally fighting it, is the joint longest actual period of gameplay in the entire instance. So at least they front loaded the action, I guess. Main big baddie of the whole game, Gaius is here with his knobbly face and he gives a proper baddie monologue where he asks Sid to to join us, which Sid doesn't fancy. So then he asks us, the player character, to join us. And we say no as well. So Gaius unleashes a big boy robot to kill us all. That cutscene lasts two minutes, 50 seconds as a lead in to a fight that takes 39 seconds. You can see where this is going, right? Sid takes considerably longer than that to tell us that there is a console in this room and that we should get going, which we do into statistically the most action packed segment of the dungeon where we run to the mech bay, boot ourselves up a beautiful stompy boy and go smashing through to the next cutscene, exploding everything that gets in our way. Self-destructing to knock through the big blast door at the end. And then there's even more gameplay where we take 14 seconds to literally just run through a door before we face off with Nero, who talks to us for the best part of four minutes to tell us that he was jealous of Sid at school, which you know, is interesting, I guess. But here's the thing, Sid is not even here. He is up in the control room listening to this. We basically stand here for four minutes waiting for this guy that we are about to fight to finish a phone call. Like, that's actually what is happening here. But it's totally worth it, you know, because then we get a fight that lasts just over a whole minute and Nero escapes anyway before Sid, who is 34 years old, takes one minute and 40 seconds to tell us to get on the elevator. One minute and 40 seconds. That's longer than the big boy robot fight, longer than the Nero fight, longer than the Gaius fight, longer than the Ultima weapon fight, and longer than the final fight against Bad Thancred. To say, get on the elevator. There's then 20 full seconds of top shelf AAA video game action where we get on the elevator before we begin the most painful run of non-action in the entire instance. Yes, that's right. This thing is only just starting to get serious and you can tell because in the next cutscene, we get voice acting for the first time in Praetorium, which you'd imagine, oh, okay, this is the moment 20 minutes into Praetorium that they have decided to switch to voice acted lines. This must be a really important or dramatic or meaningful part of the story that they want to highlight, like where in the Wizard of Oz, it suddenly bursts into color, you know? Something major is going on. Quiet, everyone. I really need to hear this. And you know what? I'm going to do this line justice and I'm going to play it to you in full. Control panel. It'll be somewhere nearby. <laughs> 
So Square Enix decided to use their big moment where this is voice acted now to drag some random dude off the street who I suspect has never actually spoken out loud, let alone read lines off a script, because it's very important that we hear him tell us to press a button and make the lift go. At this stage in the dungeon, we have already pressed two buttons to make two different lifts go without needing to be told. But okay, fine. If you think I'm being a bit harsh on the voice actor here, then wait, because that's not all. Oh, and don't even think about that. It's too bloody useful. Actually, can we go back to not having the voice acting, please? Sorry, I hate it. The Sid lines didn't quite work out, but Gaius is here now for his big fascist monologue. And if you were writing a script where the big baddie has just arrived, where you've just started with the voice acted lines, what's the first thing that you would write for the baddie to say? Tell me, for whom do you fight? <laughs> How very glib. Why, yes! Questions to the player character who can't answer. And do you believe in Eorzea? This monologue is 15 seconds shy of five minutes long, which still only makes it the second longest cutscene in this run, by the way. And it's actually fine. Your leaders are lying to you. You are weak. Mankind needs a strong man like me to be all strong and stuff. There's nothing wrong with the speech, but it is very long. And what tension there is in this scene is kind of ruined by any shot of the player characters who, for some reason, aren't standing in their I'm about to fight poses, but in their chilling out in Grid poses, which makes them just look bored. And honestly, I know the feeling. The fight lasts a full minute if you're slow, after which Gaius takes another full minute to be a bit surprised and get off the lift. Because yes, while we have the big bad at our mercy and unable to escape, we don't kill or capture or even otherwise slightly impede that big baddie until we get to his floor. We're standing by the control console and I know we know how to use it because Sid just explained it to us very slowly. Why don't we just press the button and make the lift start going up away from the Ultima weapon? But no, instead we get another two and a half minutes of Gaius showing us that he's got the Ultima weapon and then getting in the Ultima weapon. And it's like, yeah, we know Gaius, that's literally why we're here. And this sequence really highlights the problem with Praetorium. Since the end of that mech riding section, we've had less than three minutes of actual gameplay. One minute of which was running through a door, running to an elevator and running through another door, sandwiched between over 13 minutes of unskippable cutscene. And I'm riffing on it a bit, but these cutscenes aren't even bad, they're just terribly paced and placed in relation to the action. I don't need you to take a minute to tell me to press the button on the elevator, Sid. I know how an elevator works. The first Ultima fight that follows all of this is at least the joint longest segment of gameplay in the whole instance, though. And a lot more action packed than running through corridors not attacking anything. So, yeah, great work. This is genuine genuinely good. We are nowhere near finished by the way, but I'm going to fly through to the end from here, which is something the game definitely doesn't do, because the next cutscene is just so long. Gaius is still confused that he can't beat us, and Bad Thancred pops in to tell him that it's because we have Hydelaine's blessing, and also he's going to use the ultimate weapon as the body for his god to be reborn into, which Gaius isn't happy about, obviously, but you know, he's got to deal with us first in the ruins of the Praetorium, because that got destroyed when Bad Thancred did his thing. And this is so awesome, and the stuff about the Asians and their gods, placing them as the real big baddies able to manipulate the Empire to their own ends, is by far the most important plot shared in this entire instance, maybe in the whole of A Realm Reborn. The fact that Hydaelyn's power to protect us has been exhausted in keeping us alive through that massive explosion, meaning that the stakes are suddenly very, very high. This is a really good cutscene. It's just so long. The third and final fight with Gaius is actually effing boss, before Bad Thancred spends another four minutes to tell us that Heidelin sucks, he's gonna release all the primals, and sucks to be us because he's gonna kill us. There's one last incredibly short fight, and thank goodness we can skip the final Friendship is Magic cinematic and all go home because it is over. A 45 minute experience of which half an hour is unskippable cutscenes that 90% of the players participating in will have seen countless times before. And I want to make something very clear, okay? All this talk about how needlessly long the cutscenes are is not a criticism of the new player experience, where watching them for the first time is 
long, but ultimately really fun because you're at the end of Realm Reborn. You're about to get some credits that totally trick you into thinking that there's not another 80 quests to go before Heavensward. You deserve a high budget movie to enjoy at this point. No, the problem with the new player experience is how easy it is to feel like you've missed huge swathes of it. The brutal length of those in-game cutscenes is the problem for the veterans running the dungeon on their daily roulette, which, as we've said, they have to do for new players to be able to experience it easily. And this double-barreled shit show, where no one has a satisfactory experience, is why I think that Praetorium is one of the worst experiences in MMOs, certainly in good MMOs. And I think I've shown why. Just like dunking on someone on Twitter, it's all about the ratio. And I know what lots of the comments on this video are going to say. Taliesin, nice jacket. I love the Praetorium. I watch your videos on the other screen while I run it because I'm sure as shit not playing any video games during most of that time. And that is certainly true. You can watch an entire episode and a half of Avatar The Last Airbender just in the cutscenes for Praetorium. But I'm not sure I'm sitting there doing literally nothing for 30 minutes is a great defense of the experience, to be fair. I think that most of us can agree that Praetorium just doesn't really work for anyone right now. And Yoshi P agrees, confirming that it is something that they're going to look at reworking in the non-specific future. Which is great, because it means that now we get to ask, how do you fix the Praetorium? Well, internet, I have good news, because I'm going to tell you how, and... I think you're gonna be surprised. Hi guys, have you been to the official t and &E site recently? Because we have an actual, real life, I would even say professional grade website. Which is why we are very happy to be working with Squarespace, who are sponsoring today's video and who made building our shiny new web space possible. A building job that we let you design. People of the internet, you decided that out of a list of amazing, groundbreaking new features for our site, you collectively wanted to see our entire homepage replaced with a video of Ian Hazacostas confirming that Taliesin was right is canon. This is what you asked for. And thanks to Squarespace's easy to use page templates, we gave you what you supposedly wanted. And not gonna lie, the feedback has been surprisingly good. Thanks for all of your support Port of comments. Best of all, thanks to Squarespace's handy what you see is what you get editor, you can also just make things go away if you need to, like, what if I just, hmm, oops. We still have new features coming, including some exclusive one-off merch powered by Squarespace's amazing e-commerce platform and the official t and &E one photo of Idris Elba per day mailing list, made possible by Squarespace's brilliant mailing list integration. Tally thinks this stuff takes ages to build, but thanks to how easy Squarespace Squarespace makes it, I can just sit up here drinking gin while he waits. And while you're waiting, why not make your own website? For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, just go to squarespace.com slash taliesinevitel or click the link in the description to sign up. That's squarespace.com slash taliesinevitel. Evitel, is there something wrong with the website? No, what? It's just that the Taliesin was right video has disappeared from the homepage. Oh, that must be a bug. Can you smell gin? What? So how do we fix Praetorium without ruining it as a dramatic climb? IMAX for new players and without scaring old players off, without losing any of the story or gameplay. I'm not a game dev, obviously, but I am a published playwright and I do write internet videos for a living. And yeah, I am undeniably shit at my job, but I don't know nothing about this stuff. And for me, it really is all in the editing. Because like I say, it's not just that the cutscenes are too long, but that those cutscenes make the action parts that they bookend so pointless feeling in comparison. So honestly, and this is gonna surprise you, but the first thing that I would do is make the Praetorium longer. Or at least the fights. When I told you earlier that Praetorium featured twice as much cutscene as gameplay, I bet you were shocked because I bet you thought that there was proportionately much more cutscene than that. If you'd asked me before I did my stopwatch run, then I'd have guessed that actually playing the game made up just like a quarter of the experience. And that's because the time spent actually playing the game feels like it's going much quicker because, you know, you're playing a game and it's fun. So step one, I 
I would buff the health of all of the bosses by 50 to 100% and make them a much bigger part of the experience, whilst also finding a way to make the cutscenes shorter. And here's the thing, no one wants to lose the big important bits, and in fact, I don't want to lose any of it. I think there is dialogue and interactions here which would genuinely work better if it wasn't in a cutscene. Prime example, after the big boy robot fight, when Sid discovers the console, tells us we can use it to communicate and to get on the lift, I remember thinking one day as we were running this, what a shame that Final Fantasy XIV doesn't do that thing that some other MMOs do, where characters talk in little speech bubbles while the action is happening. That would really help with all of this. And then I remembered that actually Final Fantasy does have little speech bubbles that pop up during gameplay, and in fact that actually happens in this dungeon for Sid to tell us stuff while we fight. And it makes me think, why is this console scene here when he could just say the lines over the big boy robot fight, or as we descend on the elevator? It's an absolute no brainer to lay this dialogue over some of the gameplay rather than separate it out. You lose nothing and you gain plenty. Likewise, Nero's I'm so jealous of you conversation with Sid, which is already carried out over comms. These characters are not in the same room having this conversation. Why do we have to just be there watching it happen? Why can't this conversation play out over the mech joy ride that comes before it, which you can't skip and which always lasts the exact same amount of time? Then when we get to the boss room, we just have the bit of the scene which is actually delivered to us and we've saved three minutes of dead time whilst losing exactly zero lines or plot or character development. Likewise, Sid telling us to go to the elevator. Let it play as we run to the elevator. Likewise, Sid telling us to press the button on the elevator. We literally press a button on the console to trigger this scene. Why not just have us press the button on the elevator instead? If I was actually editing this game, I would cut a a lot of Gaius' speech on the elevator, but that's not what we're trying to do here, where we don't want to lose anything. So at the very least, he can say his parting lines from the cutscene after the fight, during the fight, as he reaches low health. I had not thought to be so hard pressed. Likewise, we're not going to cut Thancred's big speech, but I genuinely believe you could have him appear in the first Ultima battle and say all of those lines over the action, up until... which means you still get all of the actual plot and awesome visuals in the cutscene as normal. Likewise, Gaius' final speech as he is dying would absolutely work during the fight as he realizes he is losing and makes one final dire warning. Heed me before the cutscene starts with the Ultima weapon exploding. By implementing these changes, buffing the boss health considerably, and having dialogue with unimportant visuals playing over the in-game action where it makes sense, you don't cut a single line of dialogue. Okay, you can cut one line of dialogue. Oh, and don't even think about that. It's too bloody useful. And actually, you only lose four minutes from the Praetorium's entire runtime. But importantly, the difference in proportion between cutscene and gameplay is completely changed. From there being twice as much time AFK as playing, to there actually being more time playing than doing nothing. And to repeat, you haven't lost a single line of dialogue. Okay, you've lost one line of dialogue, sue me. I think that this subtle change in the active-passive balance of Praetorium would actually go a huge way to changing everyone's experience for the better, while still telling the exact same story with the exact same words, still acting as an uber-dramatic and massive climax to the story arc for first-timers. I think it's a win-win, but what do you think, Warrior of Light? Warrior of Light agrees. But what do you think of my idea for fixing the Praetorium? Do you even dislike it? Maybe it's your favourite experience in video games and you spent this entire video wondering why I'm so upset about it. Maybe you have a much better idea for a fix. Let us know in the comments below and actually, genuinely, do let me know what you think of this vid. It's about Final Fantasy XIV and we don't usually make videos about Final Fantasy XIV. If this doesn't turn out terribly, then I'd like to do a video about the genius storytelling in Heavensward. There's an Avatar video that 
that I've always wanted to make, and ideas for content on Skyrim and Divinity 2 and Baldur's Gate and all sorts, which I would love to put out alongside our usual WoW work. So yeah, I'd really love to hear your thoughts on that. But either way, thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, don't thank us, thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to make all of our work happen. And seriously, guys, thank you, because if it weren't for you, there would be a whole lot less Taliesin and Avatar. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. And remember, my name is Ms. Tech. No, my name is Taliesin from me and Avatar and Aniron too. Until next time, cheerio.